Hey there, I'm Kathy with the Traveling Homesteader in Gyroscope Farm, and today we're going on a bit of a field trip again. And today's field trip is going to be about gardening. Um, so just to kind of give you a little bit of a fill-in, I belong to this church who we decided to get together, a group together, um, to kind of work on our own self-reliance. And since it's that time of the year of gardening, we decided to kind of start with a garden. So our goal is to be able to do gardening at our own level, and whether we live in an apartment or in five acres or whatever, but then also if people want to do a community garden. And so we've secured a spot where we can have our own um, garden that's going to be probably about an acre big, but we're also going to go on a bit of a field trip to see another fully operational community garden. That's what we're going to do today is go check out this community garden and what they end up doing is being able to supply 90% or more of the food that people will eat in their homes to about 1,500 people. So that's kind of a stash. So we'll find out more information about that garden and I'll be talking to some of the people in the group that I'm with to kind of see what they're wanting to do. Um, I know we got talking the other night about even interact, having uh, bees be a part of our circulation. So while somebody might only have enough room for a bed, like a, raise, a four by eight raised bed, maybe they could also have a beehive. And so we're gonna talk about that sort of thing about what we can have versus what we uh, can have as a group and all that sort of good stuff. So come along, see what we have, and come check out the cool community garden. So now that we're here at this garden, we can kind of see it in a different setup, maybe than what you have. It's certainly different than what I have, but it's nice to see. And you can see behind me that there are people working on the garden. And this particular space is a raised bed that they're, they've actually put some nice compost on. That is, there's some compost in the back of this truck, but you can see over here, that this is a big old pile of leaves that they actually turn and use in other places too. Um, but you can see behind me that it's actually a fairly big spot that they have compost. You don't have to have anything fancy or big, but you can have a space specific to that. You can see back over here, there's another pile that they use and it's, they actually have here, um, this is the composted version of what they're putting on their garden over here. And so it's really nice to see people coming together to work on a, this garden and come to find out they end up feeding 30 people every day with a budget of about twelve to $1,500 a year. So that's not a whole lot of money that they pay, that they have available to them. So that's why they grow this food. Um, but something that you can do too is have it be educational where people can learn how to do this themselves. And so you'll see here in a minute, um, they have signs to help with that education as well as hands-on experience. So this is a neat sign to help with learning how to do compost and what can be composted. Okay, so this is my good friend Rick Siebel. I'll say his name, his whole name, because he's awesome that way. He not only is he here with me at this community garden, but he's my neighbor as well. And he helps out with setting people up with their compost for their gardens. So now that you've brought us here to this great place, what can you tell us about it? It's awesome. Sweet. It's awesome. <laughs> their total concept is they use a lot of leaves and uh, they build their beds. They've been building their beds for 25 years and the soil is just beautiful. Awesome. And uh, things grow well. They cool. grow softball size onions and big old cauliflowers. Sweet. And how many people does this garden serve? One who's in charge of the compost. They, they've got two gardens, uh, one in Springfield and one here. And between the two gardens, they grow about 200,000 pounds of food wow, for the uh, food bank for Food for Lane County. That's a little bit. A little bit, yes. <laughs> awesome. Well, thank you. And I may ask you some more questions along the way. But... Someone must be in charge of the compost, too. <laughs> yeah, kind of, sort of. 
And it, it'll probably come up to 140, maybe come up to 150 degrees, we'll even 160, around, just depending. To, and it's what makes the, 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 the uh, temperature way. come up is really all the little organism, bacteria, you know, all the little things that are kind of working in there, and they're, you know, they're working, and they are making this. Um, they, they are making the temperature actually come up. This will start falling. And um, so at the time that it comes up, about a few days later, it will start going down. And then what you do with the, the hot builds, as we call them, um, is that you turn it <coughs> to turn the cooler so stuff in and then you know and, yeah, and, and the temperature will come back up and then you add more stuff to no it. you don't you just let it be i'm not sure you let it be and you just kind of let it finish itself and you know it'll still take two three months to do that okay everyone this is my friend aaron and he and i kind of went off exploring a little bit and we mm -hmm. found back here some what looked to be blackberries and or raspberries and it's really kind of neat to see all the variety that they have here and now that we've gotten exploring a little bit and seen about how they'd use their compost we're going to check out all the other things that they have as well you want to say hi to anyone aaron hi hi <laughs> so we'll see you a little bit later see you later part here is that they do have so many different uh, options for their layout and they have their herb garden over here with a nice little path that they've made with rocks and things and then something of a bread oven or pizza oven over here that they can use to cook things and this is what's really kind of nice to see about what a community can do to help lower income people, lower income people or anyone else who's willing to participate You can see also over here that they have a different, a little bit different setup for some raised beds. So since we've been here, we've actually seen several different methods of gardening. Um, in this case, it's a slightly raised bed, but what they do is they have the stakes supporting um, any very various widths of um, lumber. As you can kind of see over here, that there's some lumber that they actually are supporting with these stakes and they're using what compost they have that to, to add to their soil to then plant all these different types of plants that you saw people planting in other areas. They've also added these signs to help people identify the, um, the what I call recurring plants or the plants that come back each year. Um, I guess those by definition are called perennials. Um, but you can see here that there's a variety of plants that come back that they have different signs for. 
And there's that nice big bay plant and rosemary. And there's this nice lady that I've seen around doing a lot of different things. <laughs> and over here, these are some different composting bins that people can use. And as we stopped by before, we have another set of composting bins right in there. The black ones where the woman is speaking at. And so there's a couple of different ways that you can compost your soil, you might say. Um, and so they have greenhouses in the back there too that they can use up to this point. And the nice part, if you've noticed, is that there are birds here as well. And so when you have a garden like this, it attracts different species of animals to the area, both positive and negative. And it really ends up being kind of an enjoyable space wherever you have it. Something I wanted to point out here to you too is that you can have things grow in different ways in small spaces. Our group is looking at small spaces just because of people's yards. And so like something you might wanna to consider too is like this grape arbor. Now this is a decent size arbor, but you can see here, this is one plant here on the corner. And it actually goes down that way and over this way, um, that way. <laughs> so it's on the corner, so it goes in two different ways. And there's a woman I work with who ends up having one grape over an arbor that they've created. And she's had this one plant for, let's say between 10 and 15 years. And not last year, but the year before, she was able to get enough grapes off that one plant in her backyard that it was on something similar to this. <laughs> that she was able to can 70 quarts of grape juice, straight up grape juice. 70 quarts of grape juice from one plant is a substantial amount. And her backyard garden is rather small in comparison to like what we're seeing here. So it's amazing what you can do in small spaces with growing systems like up and square foot. And so trellising, um, that ends up being a, a good option as well. Potted plants are also a good option. So you can see here that Betty's nicely fluffing up the compost that they've laid after this other lady has moved the water line to adjust for the width of the bed that they're doing. So this time of the year, is really about prepping the soil and planting versus harvesting. So all these plants that they're planting and all the, the soil that they're amending will help grow some pretty fabulous looking plants that will feed a lot of people this year. So here you can see that they've planted um, peas. I'm not sure if they're sugar peas or snap peas, but they've put them in what we call cages to help them grow up and trellis on this fencing that they've probably got through recycling. But they have this nice row of peas that will have a lot of nice peas. And then right next door, they have some onion starts. And these little onion starts will grow into what Rick said will be very large onions, which is kind of a nice thing to have. So as you can see here, there's even a, they have a nice tree over here, a blossoming tree, um, that will produce some sort of fruit. But as you can see so far, there's a lot of different things that they've done with this garden with a lot of ingenuity and a little bit of money. And the thing is people also donate to uh, their time and their money to this particular garden, which is really kind of a nice thing because it, the importance of gardening and helping people to know where their food comes from is so great that I think people have lost the idea of that they can't just go to their grocery store and get, you know, plums or lettuce or whatever. And that, as my mom used to say when I was growing up, Instead of there are starving kids in Africa to eat your food, she'd say there are people in New York that don't know where their vegetables come from or that they don't know that where 
peas grow. <laughs> and so I was like, that going on, I don't want to know any more about gardening. But they're coming to find out there are people who don't know how tomatoes grow. There are people who don't know how onions grow. Um, and that they kind of are like, well, just it's at the grocery store. That's all we need to know. And so by coming to a place like this, there are people who live in very urban areas that learn how to grow food for themselves in an urban setting. And like this happens to be behind a church um, and behind a school. And there are various different groups here that are interacting to not only learn, but ha help give hours so that this garden can thrive, which is kind of a neat thing. And so um, there's a lot of things going on here that are just really cool to see. Is that a good thing to sift through dirt? Uh, on this case, yes. Awesome. Because there is a lot of roots yeah? and uh, weeds ah. they don't want in the beds. Okay. What are you going to be planting over there? On these beds will be tomatoes and bell peppers. Ooh, sounds fun. But they won't be planted until later on. Okay. Awesome. Well, thank you for all your help and thank you for letting me see what you're doing. <laughs> <coughs> what kind of tree is this one right here? Uh, honestly, I do not know. You should ask Mary on that one. Okay. I'll check it out. Because back in the orchards, there's pears, apples, like that. Oh. So believe it or not, with most of these beds that we've already seen, this is kind of where they start. So this is a spot where they've, to me, clearly used before, but is they haven't gotten to it this year to use. And now I'm not sure if they'll use it or not, but you can see that there's, to me, that these are weeds, but they have some other plants in here, like these, that may be like a, a mustard or a type of lettuce that people can eat. And so some of it may have overwintered, but they, uh, they have their plan here that they will use this space in a way that will be most helpful. Now that there probably are some people here that are saying, Kathy, you don't know what you're talking about. These could very well be something that you could use in, in your garden as, um, like in your, that you could use in your salads, but I'm not sure. But this is a place that they probably will be um, taking amendments to <clears throat> as they go. But you can see too that they have some, what look to be either onions or garlic that are, that are also sprouting out or could be leeks. But this is a really cool spot that they have out here that they're taking to this spring and slowly but surely going through each and every section and having their set up for water um, so they have a bit of a hose system of an irrigation system <clears throat> that looks pretty cool and they've used you can see where they've laid their compost from their pile over there and this is just a really nice setup of how they have used this space so here we're gonna kind of go through their greenhouses that some people call them hot houses or hoop houses. And depending on where you are, if you define it as a hoop house, you may actually be able to get grant money to do to um, build one of these and then to be able to grow in. And so um, you can grow in these in various different times of the year, depending on how you um, allow for the sides to come up or down. And so as we go in here, you can kind of see what they are growing. Run wire or string up to the, the supports and then just make show us up the huh. tomatoes and this just looks, looks nice. So you can see that you can grow tomatoes, peas, all sorts of different things and even use trellising to help with that. And over here is where they've actually started many of the plants we've already seen them put in the ground. Now, 
Now, something I'll point out here too in case, this nice little item is a heat pad right here. That is a nice little thing that you can actually put right under your seedlings, as you can see here. And it's plugged in to help with heating these up so that they can actually have time to germinate and grow a little bit better. So if you have an opportunity to get one of these seed um, heat plants or heat pads, those are good. Just a cloudy day. It's so nice and warm. Hello. Hello. I'm just doing individual things right now. I guess I can grow some seeds. And something here that they've done that's actually a really good thing to that I'd pass on to you is that they've they've done for these plants is that they've labeled here what it is. Um, I'm not sure with this EH22, what, that's something I'm not sure of. But then they also put the date and maybe the person who did it. And so by labeling what it is and the date, that helps you know to when to put it outside. Because on your seed packages, they usually have a date from planting of the seed to germination to then like hardening off in the garden, which is a, a good thing to monitor. Even little broccoli. Wow. So, so from this first uh, greenhouse we were in, we're going to go into another one that actually is a little bit different setup, but still the same premise. So this is the next one where they've actually started planting. Um, this is more of a, what you might call a hoop house, because the sides you can actually bring up. And what they've done is they've planted some cool crops in here, like. Uh, carrots and I want to say Swiss chard but some other various different cool crop items and they're using the similar system in here of watering and raised beds of just having the soil raised there um, and they add amendments as they need and so this particular water system too is kind of cool because it's all hooked up and they can switch on and off at different points what needs to go here or not or come down through here or there and so they can kind of do area watering instead of all at once and the other bit that people do here is as i have too is that they they don't throw away their pots <laughs> and that's a good thing when you're transplanting and growing so many different plants you need different sizes and so you can have the trays the pots and then you can have various different sizes like over here and then they can harden off the plants from say the first greenhouse we were in into a place like this where there's still a little bit of heat from the overhead but it has a bit of a breeze too and so these benches are really helpful because they're about waist high and they're good for working um, various different plants but then as we come over here we can see in this last greenhouse another um, open-sided greenhouse where they have some different lettuces and this is a nice part too is that you can get so many different varieties of plants by planting yourself than you can even find in the store Over here is where you can see their orchard with some really nice um, pruned and propagated trees.
So here, Diane is actually planting, as she told me a minute ago, some cabbage in the words. They need to be very delicate and planting it just so. Um, but it's kind of nice to see all these different people coming together and planting for other people and composting for plants that'll be growing this year. And so having all these people come together to kind of help everybody out is really kind of nice to see. Hey, Mr. Aaron. What, what was that? Chop, chop, what are we working on over here? Garden. Garden? Yeah. What are they putting on the on the garden over there? Is that poop? Yeah. Is that manure to help it grow? Yeah. Yeah. Do you know what another name for this stuff is called? The poop stuff? Yeah. It's called compost. Compost. Yeah. So it's it's poop and it's like garden stuffs and plants that get all mixed up and they get to sit a while, huh? Yeah. Yeah, and then as it sits, it gets to go and be used over here on these gardens so that the plants can grow better. And then it gets all mixed in, huh? What, Rick? You don't have an army at home? I don't have an army at all. Oh, man. It's just me and the dog. What, haven't you gotten the goats going in on things? <laughs> no. Oh, I should have asked you for some goat's milk, so I could have tried the goat's milk. Oh. Yeah, we haven't started milking yet, but the people want milk. Milking is a tiny thing in there. I haven't convinced my brain yet. And at the end of the day, they end up using a lot of their food that they, from their garden that they've grown and help have people get lunch. Do you like it? Exciting stuff. Are you going to be five years or four years? Okay. 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 We have it in the tank. Wait, wait, let's put it in the You don't have regular vitamin C? Can I get you some bread? Do you, did you take the oregano? Can you give me a little bit of buffet? Riley? Neil, what would you like? Many people, so many of us, you know, we fast food, or 
And so we try to make it as yummy as possible to make them it as accessible as possible for them to try something new. Good. So the way I look at it is we get to create the world we want to live in. Each other is passing on. I think right, it's worth it. Learn by doing each one, each one. So you can just eat it. Well, you think what? Yes, yeah, they're delicious, right? Mm -hmm. And you guys come over here. The kale and collards. They're getting thinner. Okay, so they just get two or three years. No, 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 no. These would be like two weeks or three weeks, and then they're out of here. These are just the Brussels sprouts that we've harvested yeah. off the Brussels sprouts left the plants and they send up the shoots. Oh my goodness. Uh, okay. I don't like to plant them because yeah, I thought they were fruit. Which is... No, because then yeah. you get a crop after the crop. Yeah. Yeah. Here are collards. Yeah, or dip it in ranch dressing or use it like broccoli, steam it, oh, eat it. Sweet. What is this? This is just collard greens going to, oh, eat the top, eat it. But what is it? Well, come over here, right here. oh, kale, kale. Oh, yeah, okay. I don't really good. You know, go to the store because it's probably too juicy broccoli rob. Broccoli rob usually has a bite to it. These are sweet. But you have mm. to, like, it's not going to sit, like, after a few days it will. So that's why. Yeah, they don't need it. Yeah, yeah, so. Here we. In fact, we didn't harvest them. We went out there. So is the clover uh, just kind of a weed barrier and nitrogen fixer? Or, you know? well, I think it's just a weed. So now that we've gotten through our tour, um, it was really nice to be able to sit down and have dinner, or actually lunch, um, with the people that were helping out at the garden. And kind of the cool aspect of this particular garden we went to go see was that um, as part of their kind of payment system, at the garden. Um, if you help out at the garden and uh, volunteer your time, you can get lunch there, but then you can also harvest some things. And I ended up getting some nice items um, for being there to help out. And so, like I was able to get some, some nice herbs, I got some thyme and some bay leaves, but I also got some a leek and some lettuce. And so I'll be able to use some of that tonight in my dinner, which is kind of nice. Um, but the other part of this was that as far as the group that I was with coming to that garden to check it out, we were able to see what this particular garden was able to grow in kind of short order with pretty much all volunteers and a very small budget. I want to say again, the budget was something like $1,500 a year. And so they rely heavily on donations or just plain old getting creative. And so sometimes when you get um, kind of wanting to do something, you, you can focus in on the resources you have um, and what you can do in the space you have. Which leads me to one time I ended up wanting to have a garden at my home and I was like, I don't have a whole lot of money, but I really want to do something. So what is in my area that I can use as a resource? And in my case, I still am in an area where there are wineries. And they have a they have a lot of bottles <laughs> and so I decided to make some raised beds out of wine bottles and the two raised beds that I made were four, about four foot by six foot beds two beds that were about <clears throat> I'd say at least eight inches deep and I just took empty wine bottles and laid them on the side and stacked them kind of like bricks and I ended up using I think 400 bottles total 200 per bed and I gotta say they were pretty fabulous beds and I ended up getting uh, compost from a friend um, from her horse farm and then I ended up paying I think about $20 for a load of uh, garden comp or garden soil from a local place called Lane Forest Products local to me so for about 20 bucks I got a fair amount of good stuff out of these two beds and they were great for my um, my onions and tomatoes and garlic. So if you want to volunteer at a community garden or come up with some different ways to do make a garden yourself, you can always check out the what I just pointed out. But you can also kind of check out some other things 
online or in your local community that you might be going on. So thanks again for stopping by and I hope you enjoyed this video today. Click down below um, on some things that you might be working on now uh, in planting your own garden because it is the season to be gardening. And I hope you have a great day and as usual, stop back by and see what else we're getting into.